share with you uh, for just a um, very brief moment uh, this evening from God's Word. And um, Eddie read uh, to us earlier from Psalm 150, and there's another psalm uh, of praise. There are many psalms of praise, but another one, Psalm 100, that I'm going to share in just a moment. Uh, just recently, I heard uh, someone give a sermon, an officer give a sermon, and uh, in that sermon, they were making a point about worship and what it means to worship, what worship is really all about. And uh, the beginning of the message, the officer related two stories. This was the first. He said in one of his corps, uh, where he was stationed, a member of the congregation, a lady in the congregation, was on to do a vocal selection this particular Sunday. And he said when she got up to sing, she actually looked like Susan Boyle. Now, some of you might remember Susan Boyle from Britain's Got Talent. And uh, we know that when she walked onto the stage, you know, people started to laugh. And, and you know, when she kind of took the stage, she didn't look like somebody who really could sing. But boy, when she opened her mouth, it was amazing, absolutely amazing. Well, this officer, as he related this story about the core that he was in, and he said, when this lady got up to sing, she looked like Susan Boyle from Britain's Got Talent. But when she started to sing, she sounded more like Willie Nelson. <laughs> We've all been there. And he said, she didn't sound at all like Susan Boyle, she sounded more like Willie Nelson. However, he said in that moment, he watched the congregation who were enjoying that vocal number to the full. And when this lady finished singing, the people applauded. And he said in that moment, he recognized that his congregation had worshipped. They were brought into the presence of God by this lady who sang. He said a few years later, while he was stationed at another corps, this time with a brass band, a bandsman was invited to play a euphonium solo on the Sunday morning, and he had chosen as the tune the song Jerusalem. And he said the solo was flawless. Every note was played perfectly. He watched this man and listened for the absolute, he said it, it just brought you, you thought you were in heaven. You thought you had gone to the new Jerusalem. It was so beautiful. And he said he watched the congregation and the congregation listened intently to every note and when this gentleman finished, everyone applauded, and it was clear in that moment that his congregation had worshipped. His congregation had been brought right into the presence of God. And that Sunday morning, the officer went on to ask a question to the congregation, and we were in the congregation that Sunday. He said, what happened? in both scenarios. The lady who sang and sound like Willie Nelson, and the gentleman who performed a flawless rendition of Jerusalem, both brought people into an attitude of worship. But you know what? It had as much to do with the listeners as it had to do with those who well, well, we'll call it performed. I know that we don't call it that when we're doing a vocal or a euphonium solo, but just for this moment, we'll say that it has as much to do with the congregation and with those who were listening as it did with those who performed. Have you ever wondered how it is that the same people can attend the same worship service 
and one person can walk out the door and say, I felt the Spirit of God at work in that service. I felt the presence of God in an amazing way. Well, the next person can walk out and say, I didn't get anything out of that. And we've all been there too, haven't we? Well, you know what? It's often the attitude that we bring to worship, isn't it? And whether we're listening to a lady who looks like Susan Boyle but sings like Willie Nelson, or whether we are listening to music that is absolutely flawless, it is how we are brought into the presence of God and the attitude that we bring to worship that really counts. So what attitude should we bring to worship? Psalm 100, very, very quickly, Psalm 100 gives us a couple of clues. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen? Amen. On the 73rd anniversary for the Lower Island Cove Corps, it's a good exercise to look back for a moment and praise God for where he has brought us. The first verses of this psalm uses the words, shout for joy, worship with gladness, come with joyful songs. And you know what? If we come to worship with joy and gladness and joyful songs with a, a, a song in our heart, with a song on our lips, that is an attitude that will not only lift our spirits, but it will also honor God. And so may it be so for every one of us who ever enter the doors of a sanctuary. Worship the Lord with gladness. The next verses of Psalm 100 is an acknowledgement that the Lord is God. We are made by Him. We are His people. We are His sheep. And do you know what? Sheep need what? Guidance. Good, thank you. But they need a shepherd. They need a shepherd to guide them. And so, on this anniversary Sunday, it is good to acknowledge that all we need for life and living, we have in Jesus Christ our good shepherd. Can you say amen to that? The final verses of Psalm 100 <coughs> uses words like thanksgiving, praise, thanks. Why these words? Because the Lord is good. His love endures forever, and his faithfulness continues through all generations, past, present, and future. And so, as we worship tonight, and as you worship Sunday after Sunday, may we always find time to acknowledge who God is, what he has done, what he continues to do in our lives, in our church, and understand the part we play when we come to worship. Whether you are an accomplished musician or you're Willie Nelson, doesn't matter. What you bring to worship, if it's with an attitude of worship, God has a wonderful way of blessing it and using it for his honor and for his glory. God bless you.